All right, I want to give you a little bit of the backstory as to how the seven wealth secrets of the rainforest came to be. I think it was in 2005, and I was praying, seeking the Lord about something, and I felt like he impressed upon me to go to the nation of Panama. Now, you have to understand, I didn't know anybody there. I didn't know anybody who'd ever been there, and I had never even had the thought that one day I would want to go there. It was completely off my radar. So I said, Lord, why would you want me to go to Panama? And he said it was something about, I just picked up like finances, something to do with money, something, uh, huh? That's a third world country. So I started doing some research and found out, well, it's a big financial center. So it's, it had a lot more going on than I had any idea of. And so I said, well, when do you want me to go? And he said, well, make haste. So I said, okay. And uh, I was meeting with a client the next day or two. And uh, I mentioned to him, hey, I'm going down to Panama. And he said, when? I said, well, the best flight I could get is in about, I don't know, two weeks or something like that. So whenever it was, <clears throat> and he said, well, listen, uh, he said, well, why are you going? I said, I don't know. The Lord told me to go, I'm going. I have no idea why I'm going. He said, well, if while you're down there, you'll look for some real estate for me, some investment property. He said, I'll underwrite the cost of your entire trip. Well, I thought, why not? I didn't know why I was going there, so why not? So I did that and we got down there, we rented a helicopter, found about uh, three kilometers of beachfront property for him, which he put an offer on for tens of millions of dollars. And we did that for him. Uh, it didn't end up closing, but anyway, I was doing some business there, but I had a lot of free time. And so we went <clears throat> into various mountainous areas and one of them was a place called Boquete. And when we're in Boquete, um, I'm walking out to get some breakfast. It was kind of like a bed and breakfast type of arrangement. Not really, but a smaller hotel there. Anyway, as I'm walking, making my way from the, from the cottage, I guess you would say, to where they were serving breakfast, the Lord spoke to me again and he said, son, everything you need to learn about business, you can learn in the rainforest. Well, I'd never had a thought like that in my life. You can learn about business in the woods, in a rainforest, are you sure? So I, got, I went to the lobby and I said, listen, uh, are they having any uh, seminars in the rainforest today or something like that, business seminars? And she looked at me like I was, you know, had a, had a screw loose or something. No, <clears throat> I said, okay. So I, I pondered that, Lord, what do you mean? And uh, I rented a car, you know, we had one, I guess, and um, drove to the edge of the rainforest. I thought, man, that looks interesting. I'd like to go, but you know, I wasn't prepared. I didn't have any gear, proper shoes, any of that kind of stuff. So I wasn't really ready to go. So <clears throat> I finished up the trip and I came home and I Googled, uh, you know, rainforest and business. Like, had anybody ever had that thought before? As it turned out, the former CEO uh, of Mitsubishi wrote a book called What We Learned in the Rainforest, Business Lessons from Nature. I thought, oh, are you kidding me? Somebody else has already thought of this? That's why I did a little bit of research. I thought, okay, this is it. So as I studied this out, I then thought, well, the rainforest, I found out, is a thousand times more productive and diverse as an ecosystem than the second most flourishing or diverse ecosystem on the planet, which is the Great Barrier Reef. I mean, it's a thousand times more than number two. So I thought, wow, this is an amazing place. So I assumed that what would make it, you know, as a business analogy, what would make it so uh, prosperous? Well, it must be very well financed. In other words, it must have tremendous soil. The soil is probably the deepest, darkest, richest, you know, 10 feet thick of, of just perfectly black, dark, you know, soil. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, when I did the research, it turned out that the rainforest has very shallow, poor quality soil because of all the rain, it kind of washes it away. It gets very acidic and very shallow. So then the question became, how in the world does God get abundance from scarcity? How does he produce abundance, the rainforest, out of something scarce, very poor and shallow topsoil? And my friend, the answer to that question is what every business needs to know. And that's what this seven hour teaching series addresses. Now I'm gonna take you inside just a little bit and give you a bit of a peek at what you'll be getting, what you'll be learning, so you can see whether it's something you're truly interested in. All right, here it is. All right, friends, there's a lot of slides on this, so I'm gonna be rather quick just to give you an overview. Um, it's very tempting just to teach to you, but you're gonna have to get that to seven hours worth of content here. But the bottom line is, I, I outline what the premise for this is. The Bible says that the hidden things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen being revealed or being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and his deity. 
So we understand that's important. And we also know that Solomon talked about this. And it says that um, he spoke about trees, from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. And so we know that it's a good thing to study how God does stuff. And Solomon talked a lot about it, but there's a whole lot to learn. So that was sort of the beginning of, okay, what can I learn in the rainforest? Well, number one, everything in the rainforest grows towards the light and light enables vision. So we talk quite a bit about vision and what are the attributes of a working vision? What are the seven questions you should ask when you're formulating your vision? I give some examples. I give a biblical perspective on the topic. Uh, there's a lot there actually and then we get to well secret number two which i call the nectar sector and this really is about increasing your productivity this is what it's really about and you do that by setting up what i call a no pest zone and i learned this from uh, the smithsonian world headquarters for tropical research uh, that's in the panama canal so on barrel colorado island island and so they talk about their pests and pathogens are the only two things that can take out a tree so I thought, well, what are the two things they're going to take out of business? And so you start to learn that pathogens eat, pathogens eat us from the inside out. Pests eat us from the outside in. Pests consume what we produce. Pathogens affect our ability to produce. And so I went through all this and thought, wow, the business applications are amazing. And here's the actual headquarters right here where I went for the Smithsonian World Headquarters for Tropical Research and learned all this stuff. And by the way, when it comes to pests, setting up a no pest zone, if you understand what that means and how to do that, they found that when they were able to set up um, a couple different plots of land with, with plants growing in them, the ones that they protected from the pests with a bit of a mesh were growing 10 times faster and were already five and a half times larger than the ones that weren't uh, protected from pests. So how do you do that in business? And we talk about that. And one of the ways we talk about it, by the way, is we say, well, how's it done in nature? And there are seven ways that we found, seven strategies that are natural that we see modeled in the rainforest and we use that modeling to come up with uh, what is the appropriate um, business application. So <clears throat> there's a lot there in that. The third uh, wealth secret is the photosynthesis of ideas. And that's because you see with photosynthesis, you take light, water, and air. Think about that, sunlight, water, and air, and you produce a tree with fruit and, and, and leaves and branches and all that kind of stuff. How is that possible? Well. That brings you to, okay, how do I turn anything, any idea into uh, a tangible product or a business service or something like that? How do I get that done? So this particular series talks a lot about how do you take, go from the idea stage into reality. Now, well, secret number four is what I call the fungus factor, because this is the little secret uh, about how to grow quickly, produce more and have zero waste. And it's, I call it fungigation. It's the idea where the fungus is actually the secret to the rainforest success. And it is. And so when you understand what the role of fungus is in the rainforest, then you can say, how do I emulate that in my business? And of course, we talk about it. That's what this is all about. You want to make your business work efficiently and you don't want to have waste. So you need to learn from uh, the fungus. So we talk about that in, in a great deal of detail. Number five is what we call the strangler fig phenomenon, which by the way, I'm standing right here uh, in front of a strangler fig. It's a ginormous tree as you can see, but at one time it used to look like this. Uh, there's a palm tree and there's these nice little strangler fig seeds that a bird dropped up there and it started springing down and it looks like a decoration, but eventually that gets bigger and bigger and it starts to engulf the tree and ultimately becomes really big like this and it kills the tree and it kills its host. But what we find out is a couple of things. There's, there's something called adaptation, how to anticipate, plan for, and profit from change. And there are four phases of growth. Every business hopefully goes through them. And Jesus referenced these four phases. And he talks about springing up, growing up, uh, the full grain of the year, and then the harvest. And, it, and that's kind of when things start all over again. And so these stages are in business, they're in nature. When you understand them and you can say, okay, what is my innovation process? What phase am I in? And how, how do I um, move from one level to the next? And if you don't know how to do that, you're very likely gonna struggle or fail. So you don't wanna do that. And so there's a the growth phase, the improve and mature phase, there's the decline and renewal phase. This is really, you gotta be so careful in this one because decline happens to everybody. But can you go from decline into renewal? Well, you can, but you need to be aware of that and, and of course plan it. 
So that's it. Number six is the Brazil nut effect, which is basically the idea of expanding your business through non-competitive networks and how you can basically many times acquire something without having to use your own uh, limited resources. And we learn this through the type of relationships that are in the rainforest. And the Brazil nut effect highlights this little creature here called an agouti. He's not that little. He's can be as big as a dog, but uh, you know, good sized dog actually. But anyway, we talk about the various kind of relationships and how that works. You got a mutualistic relationship, you got symbiotic, you got opportunistic, and you have parasitic. Those are the four kinds of examples there. Well, what does that look like in business? So we talk about these kind of alliances that you can form in business, very helpful. And then number seven, the orchid element, marketing. How to promise boldly, uh, create demand and dominate your target market. And it's all about the orchids and how they do it. And it is amazing. We talk about the seven marketing secrets of the rainforest, which are right here, which of course we spend the rest of the lesson explaining what these seven things are. So that's it, my friends. That takes you into um, the whole thing. And there's obviously a lot of slides involved. I can scroll through here a lot more, but this is the overview. I hope that helps. And listen, if you love God, you love business, you love nature, you will love this. Thanks for watching. I hope you get it. God bless you.